Hello and welcome to. Are you alright, Jim? Yeah. yeah we're getting Love, we're rugby getting league. Love Rugby League Towers. We're back after four, four or five months. Thanks for uh, thanks for keeping reading the site. Drew's been working all through lockdown. He uh, obviously it's been a bit of a challenge. We're gonna be here for about half hour, forty five minutes. We're gonna talk about the Super League restart. The fixtures announcement, we'll talk about Toronto, we'll talk about Ottawa, we'll talk about anything you want. Um, if you are tuning in, please do leave uh, a comment and some message. I'm James Gordon, Drew Damshire's with me. We're, we're back, we're socially distancing in the Love Rugby League office uh, here in Warrington. Um, Drew, the Super League fixtures were announced at half 12. What was your... Uh, your initial thoughts about that announcement? Yeah, it's, well, I'm just excited to well to, to nearly be back. Uh, we're not back just yet. We've still got a couple of weeks to go, but it's been a long, well, four months now, isn't it? I was going to say three months, but it's been four months now by the time uh, it will restart. I'm just excited to get going. Um, I can see why they're using a limited amount of venues. Um, I can see why they're not using every ground available in Super League. Obviously, Toronto Wolfpack have announced that they won't be returning and playing games at the Lamport Stadium home in Canada for the rest of 2020, but they hope to go back in 2021. And obviously, there's more visa issues as well with the Wolfpack at the minute. I think it's fair to say that the Wolfpack have been the club who have been hit hardest uh, over this uh, lockdown period just because of the, the complications surrounding travel, surrounding visa issues, because some visas end. Uh, November time, I think. Yeah, so which well, obviously the season will run on until the the, the issues with the visa is because the players are because the because Toronto is a Canadian company, the, yeah. the 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 Australian and the New Zealand players, whatever their visa permits them to be in the UK for six months of the year. Mm. Now, obviously, they spend the first three months of the year over here anyway. But then, obviously, with going back in two to Canada, usually they would have enough time to. You know they wouldn't go over that six months, whereas obviously they've been here all yeah. year. So the the problem is, is that they've gone over that visa requirement. I spoke to a few people this week who think that it's a it's, it is an oversight from Toronto. I mean, obviously they can't have planned for the pandemic and uh, and stuff like that. I think in hindsight they should have let they should have told the players to go home. You know, two months ago. But I think yeah. part of the issue is that. There was, there's never quite been the certainty over what was happening with Super League. Well, we, we never knew we never knew ourselves how long the lockdown would last. Yeah. We, we, well, we thought originally it might be a month or it might be two months uh, lockdown yeah. and then play and resume. Yeah. Um, but obviously it's gone on longer and longer, and as the weeks go by, uh, we find ourselves at the four month mark now. Um, but I'm just excited that we can finally start to get a little bit of. Rugby league in our balls, in, in our bodies, and obviously we've been watching the NRL over the last couple of weeks. I've loved watching the NRL, um, but I, I prefer watching Super League over home teams. So, so the, the games, are, the games that they've announced, they've only announced the first three or four week week venues. So the August games, basically every single game in August is going to be live on Sky. It fits in nicely with the football because obviously football finishes, the the league season finishes end of July, and then the new one starts on twelfth September. So basically. August would have been mm. pretty empty for Sky, whereas they've got the rugby league now. So all the games are going to be at Headingley and uh, at St Helens, um, and then there is hope that from September onwards that clubs may be able to play at their home venues, um, potentially with crowds or limited numbers of crowds going to October. I think one of the main things in what people don't understand is the amount the amount of actual work and money it's costing to actually host the games, and mm. I think that's another reason why keeping them at um, one or two grounds is, you know, has been um, part of the plan basically. So um. it's good to have one in Lancashire and one in Yorkshire as well uh, yeah. to to stop the divide. Uh, I'm I'm not sure the old teams will be so happy that they've still got to, got to travel over to Leeds. And I mean, I suppose it was in it's interesting that they would go with. I thought they might have done like alternate the, weekends. You know, instead of having six games, because obviously that. The, the first weekend, the triple header on August the 2nd, is just because their catch up games is just three games that weekend. But then the following weekend, you've got six games, yeah. almost like a mini magic weekend at, at Headingley, and that's the format it's going to be. And I, you I, maybe have done three at Headingley on a Saturday and then three at St. Helens on a Sunday, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I, I possibly would have done, but it'll be interesting. Well, I suppose the broadcasting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
obviously Sky will be able to leave all their equipment yeah, there yeah. overnight and stuff and it'll be much easier for them. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how it all works and how it all pans out because obviously we see it, we see it towards the back end of Magic Weekend normally when the, the pitch is normally uh, in a right state. And obviously because there's going to be constant games mm. at Headingley, it's not going to be like at St. James' Park where they can... They've got top well, class facilities and they've got to recover the next day. Yeah, they've, got, they've got three on that Sunday and then the following Saturday yeah. Sunday there's three more on both yeah. days. So they've got basically nine games in basically but, eight but days. But it's, it's what you've got to do, isn't it? And we've got Dave Parkinson tuning in. Long time we'll see. How are you doing, Dave? Um, come and pop, in, pop into the office. Uh, we can still social Wait, distance. Yeah, you can wear his face mask. Uh, yeah, we have got some state of mind face masks. We are running out. I don't know where they are. We are There's somewhere in the office. Um, he says, working for home, it's lunchtime. Uh, I'm not sure how long you've been on. We've only been on 10 minutes or so, Dave. Uh, he keeps saying, well, Dave just said many magic weekends, and that's what that's what it is in effect. But that, that's what you've got to do. We can't we can't play games at every single ground in Super League. It is what it is. Uh, we've just got to get on with it, and let's just appreciate that the fact that Rugby League is back in in August the second. There's been a bit of talk about the the way the fixtures have been done. They've tried to sort of backload the fixture list so that if teams can play at the home game at the home grounds in front of the crowds, yeah. they get the fixtures in. And I think it works out that there's like two or three midweek matches and late on. So I think teams are playing about I think they're playing eight games in the last six weeks of the season. Um, and you can understand why they've done that as well uh, because obviously they're desperate to get cr- any form of crowd in whether it's a uh, a mini crowd in effect, um, or whether it's a full crowd, I don't think I don't think we'll see full crowd crowds anytime soon. Uh, Andy Mays is commenting saying Drew sporting some top top t- uh, tattoos. Cheers, Andy. <laughs> I won't say. Cheers, Andy. They, I mean, I suppose what's interesting about uh, about the whole situation is no one really knows what it's going to be like. Um, you know, it's good that all the games on Sky for that first instant. We've, we've seen about, I'd be interested if there's any season ticket holders watching, obviously clubs are sort of, some clubs are quite proud some aren't about what they're doing about season tickets. So, you know, ultimately if you bought a season ticket this year, you might have only seen two or three home mm. games. Clubs have been very, I think some clubs have worded it quite poorly, they're almost like trying to guilt trip the fans into donating the ticket or rolling it over. I think some, I've seen some options where it's, you have don't, you donate your ticket, they're not, no one's been offering refunds basically, yeah. it's been a case of either donate the money or um, you know have it fa- fa- phased over the next few seasons and stuff like that. Well then I've seen Castleford have decided not to do anything I think, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but I'm sure they announced a week ago that they're just sitting tight and waiting to see what happens. Well it's, it's a difficult one isn't it because you can see both sides of the argument, you can see where, why clubs are not doing anything that obviously they want to to just keep the, the cash flow coming into the club and then you can also see where fans because obviously all fans are different and all fans have got limited but well some fans have got limited budget some fans can afford to keep donating to the club um, but obviously this pandemic has affected everyone differently some some fans will, literally won't be able to might not be able to buy a season ticket for next season um, and they might struggle to, to attend games for the rest of this season um, once we do get crowds back um, but I'm a Wigan Athletic season ticket holder I had a, a similar I was in a similar position where they sent you three options of which you wanted to do, so you could ha- have well the games that you don't attend this season, you could have them knocked off next yeah. year's season ticket, or it- you could have a subscription service so you can watch the games on Latix TV and, and watch it via that, uh, so you still get, you're still getting to watch the games, and, but then you had to pay an extra sum of money on top if you wanted commentary on top of that, so it was... It's it all different it, it football was though, wasn't it? Because worked. football only had maybe three or four games left, whereas Super League was the way around, they'd only played three yeah. or four games. I mean, obviously at the moment we know Sky Show in the first month, but I mean, it'd be interesting to see what happens beyond that first month, from where, because presumably they're not going to then show every game. Yeah. So, it, you know, it'd be interesting to see how that all um, pans out. I mean, I, I mean, it's been frustrating waiting for the fixtures, and, uh, you know, especially when you look at we only really know the fixtures for the first three or four weeks. What do you make of Catalan? You know, so Catalan can basically play at home now. I mean, the, the restrictions in France mean that Catalan, in theory, could play mm. home games from the start of August in front of fans. They'd not be able to. I know we we had a piece yesterday, Bernie Ghost basically kicking off that he basically said the other Super League clubs have prevented them from playing in front of crowds. 
Um, yeah. At least in this first month. Have they just got to fall into line with everyone else, or do you think they've got a right to be a bit miffed about that? It's, this is another difficult one because you can, you can see both sides of the argument in every point of this whole lockdown. Um, you can see why Catalans are annoyed that they don't that they're not being allowed to play at home because French government guidelines say they can. Um, but everyone's in the same boat, aren't they? Every every team is in the same position apart from Leeds and Saints, where they, where they might have a slight advantage yeah. of playing at the home stadiums. Everyone's in the same position. So Wakefield have got to to play at someone else's stadium, Castleford have, Wigan have, it's, it's the same for, for every team, uh, apart from St. Helens and Leeds, so I think, I don't, I don't really see an issue, I, the only, the, it's the players and the staff I feel for at Castleford, because obviously they might have to go long periods without seeing the family, unless they, they I mean, what do you think, you think they might, it'd be interesting to see whether they'll base themselves over here, whether they'll fly back, I suppose it's only an hour or two flight maybe. Yeah. Well, obviously there's a, there's quite a large English mm. or British contingent now at Catalan. Yeah, they like to keep the squad together, surely. Sh- yeah, surely. Yeah, I th- I'm not too sure, to be fair. I, I, think, I think they might base themselves over here, to be honest. I mean, I'm quite keen to speak to a Huddersfield coach, as I'm offered, because obviously they, they I mean, if we, we go back to what the season was, and we might have a little chat about this in a minute, so Huddersfield have won four out of four away games. Um, at the start of Super League, and they'd made a really good start. All the only game they'd lost in the league was after that hole. So if they maintain that uh, that winning yeah. form of all these away games, they might uh, they might win the league. <laughs> the field, so there you go. That's what I'm. De- I am desperate to have a chat with them about that. So I'll have to sort that. <laughs> um, what about the Toronto situation? So obviously it came out earlier this week. Gareth Walker with a superb report in the Mirror about mm. this visa situation that we touched upon earlier. Um, like, should they just? Not played. I mean, obviously they've not got the bodies. It just seems to have been. It's been a bit of a black cloud this season for Toronto, isn't it? They've not. They've, you know, it must be really tough for them. Not. You know, they've got to Super League and they're not being able to play any games over there. But obviously they've had the salary cap issues. Um, you know, obviously the pandemic's not helped. They've had a few other issues. They obviously weren't great on the pitch either. They've now got the situation where you've got six, seven. Obviously, I would expect it to get result resolved. But having spoken to a few people this week about it, they were just like, well. They're just going to have to not play the overseas players and sign some loan players or, or English-based players and, and get them in the team. Yeah. Uh, if Andy Mays is watching, maybe they'll have some Rochdale. Well, well they're, going, they're going to have to get some loan players in, aren't they? But I think, was it the, they only had 24 players anyway and then they brought the two young lads in from Wigan? And then um, obviously Liam Kay, who just probably came on, he's been confirmed he's gone to Wakefield, so they've lost him there. Who's it? Yeah. Which may free up some cap space. They've signed Callum Watkins, obviously, as well. Yeah, they have. It's... <laughs> I, I really do feel for Toronto. I know everyone's got the, their opinions on the club and uh, how they made it into Super League and, and what they've spent. And I know some people are against them, but I, I really do feel for them this, this season. It's just been a nightmare. 2020 has been a nightmare for Toronto just because of the visa issues. The whole lockdown has affected them. Um, and obviously, was it their first six games? Yeah, first, they lost. They, lost they, they beat Huddersfield, obviously, a challenge cup. Yeah. I mean, they're quite a good example of how important it is to manage your salary cap, aren't they, really? Like, yeah. they've gone into this season, obviously, they've probably got some backloaded deals from previous seasons. They may be pr- probably overpaying players, um, you know, from the championship days or whatever. And they, they've re- really, really been hamstrung by this salary cap issue this year. Um, but it's worth remembering they don't take any central funding, they didn't take any of the TV money. As far as I'm aware, they've not had, um, they've not had like a furlough scheme. Mm. Um, is it, it is important you know, to, to remember that everything that Toronto have done money wise has been their own money. They've, yeah. Like, uh, obviously, we, we manage the social media accounts and stuff like that, James, and you do see a lot of people saying that the RFL or Super League helped Toronto out at times. It, uh, with money, but it's, it, that is definitely not the case. Everything uh, that Toronto have done has been put through and funded by themselves. Uh, and at the moment, we're, we're not expecting there to be any relegation. We don't, I mean, my, my understanding is I don't think the Championship season is going to resume. Um, the RFL is due to have a meeting, I think, July 23rd, which is still a little bit of way. Yeah. Um, even if the Championship does resume, which looks unlikely, they surely probably not going to have relegation now. You would no, not have thought. I, I, and I think it'd be, it'd be tough, wouldn't it, to have relegation at this at this stage. The official position is they they're going to confirm they want to confirm it before a ball's kicked. So 
by August the second, we'll know whether there will be promotion uh, and relegation. I mean, it would. I mean, whatever, well, whatever your opinion on Toronto, it would it would be a bit of a tragedy if they got relegated from Super League, having never played, you know, a home game, mm. uh, you know, in Super League. Whoever's fault, you know, an extraordinary circumstance. Yeah. Well, then, you know, aside from Toronto, I'm sure there's there's a few other clubs who'd be mightily relieved if there was no relegation this year, especially teams like you know, with all due respect to all KR. Their recruitment this year, they're very much sort of building for the future. They've got quite a young squad. I know they're, they're probably in a financial wall at the moment, like everybody else, but it might actually help teams like that be able to develop better yeah. and be more competitive for next year. Yeah, it, it might need to be fair, but I just think as well, if you're looking at the Championship as well with promotion, I know there's been a lot of for and against arguments for promotion this year in the, in the Championship, a lot of Championship chairman and owners are, are di completely divided on this but I think I, I don't know because I'm, I, I read I read some players who do interviews and chairman who do interviews and you do sympathise with them like Lee for example I do sympathise with Lee because they've put a lot of money and effort into their squad this year and if promotion is taken away then what have they got to play for they've got, they'll have nothing to play for yeah, and, I mean, and there's a couple of clubs like that not just Lee there's, yeah, there's I mean, some losers it, it's the thing is, is it's an extraordinary situation, and I think the problem is with you know basing all your decisions on chucking money at something. It's like well, if it's this case of you just chuck money at something and you're successful, then why bother playing? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I understand that people have put money in whatever, but everyone, so everything's relative. Do you know what I mean? Um, it'd be interesting to see. Obviously, the championship are probably championship clubs are probably in a in a relatively stable position because of the furlough scheme, I would imagine. Dave uh, says that he, he feels Toronto could have handled things better. No, without doubt. I mean, obviously you've got to, I mean, we don't know this, but you've got to question why it's come up so late in proceedings. Yeah. Um, it was another, you know, obviously Super League hasn't covered itself in glory the way it's handled the fixture announcement. It's just been a little bit more of another stick to beat them with. Obviously they had the Catalan delay, the player pay courts, now the Toronto thing. And I think the thing with me is, People talk about Toronto all about bringing headlines, which you know invariably they do. <laughs> they do. The problem is, is this year it feels like all them headlines are being negative. But then at the same time, you might say, well, no news. You know, all yeah, news is true. <coughs> it, you know, it's all coverage. And where you know, like I said, a few they've had a few calls this week, and someone said if you look at the big headlines in rugby league over the past couple of years, they've all pretty much been Toronto. Uh, Liam Fox says, I wonder if Toronto will use players from championship clubs to fill their fixtures. We were speaking well, I mean, about this before. Yeah. Uh, it, they could do, couldn't they? They could, too, because they're going, going to have to sign UK. It all depends if they can get the salary cap dispensation, I don't forget, because obviously they're going to need to get permission. If, say, the seven players that they've got can't get the visa situation sorted, they're going to need salary cap room to be able to sign yeah. whoever else. They could probably help a few championship clubs by taking players. You know, it's obviously the furlough scheme only covers the first. I think is it thirty thousand pounds. So if championship clubs have got players earning more than that, they're probably having to top up that at the moment if they're not going to play. You know, if I mean I don't know who they would take, but if Toronto went to Lee and took Danny Addy or someone yeah. like that, it might you know just on a temporary deal to the end of the season, it might save Lee you know ten grand here or there. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't know. Um, it seemed that David Argyle seemed to be talking like they, didn't, not, want to do, they didn't want to do that. Yeah, but I, I, well, but I he won't have any choice ultimately. I don't know if Andy Mays is still watching the Rochdale chairman, but uh, <laughs> the Hornets are in your registration with the Wolfpack. Um, so could we possibly see a few Hornets players go to Toronto and help them out? It's, I mean, the thing is, is obviously you've got the whole, you've got the play welfare situation, but ultimately getting through the season is the most important thing at the moment. It doesn't really bear yeah. any, you know. I suppose it depends on, on the way you're looking at it as well. Because don't forget, we're talking about getting rugby league underway, which is one thing. But another thing is it's still a Super League competition and we're still thinking about well, who's going to win it, who's going to do well, who's not going to do well. Um, you know, we don't know at the moment because it's like we have mm -hmm. the form the form book, if you like, goes out the window. You know, when are we going to talk, Casper are up there. But who knows what it's going to be like when, when it restarts. It'd be, it's almost like starting the season. You're almost like starting the season again, aren't you? But some teams have got an advantage, so we're going to have already got, I don't know what they've got, they've got 12 points, 10 points. I think Wigan and Cass have got 10 or 12 points on the board already. Whereas Saints, I think, have got six. And that's that's the difference, isn't it, between starting now and when you start at a normal 
uh, part of the season. Top four as well instead of top five. Not that make any difference. I don't think it'll make a great deal of difference, to be honest. Uh, well, last season we did have a really close battle for that yeah, place. But I just think it'll make it more exciting anyway, um, to, have a, to have a top four. Um, it'd be interesting to see if it actually plays out the finals format, because if it's more entertaining, or if it's, just if, it's a, semi-final. Yeah, if it's a cracker, if it's a cracker of a, a finals concept, and could it stay for, for next year, possibly? But then again... Well, then last year, yeah, last year was good, though, yeah, right? because obviously you had Casper beat Warrington, didn't you? And then Salford obviously did what they did to Wigan. It was, but if it works perfectly this year, then what's the point of changing mm-hmm. it again? I don't, I, I don't know how it'd work. Uh, and I am sick of structure changing in rugby league. I just want it, it to stay. It'll be interesting to see, because obviously we talk about all them games where they're backloading the season. It'll be interesting to see what the state of play is come maybe round 15, 16, when yeah. there's six games left, how many teams have still got something to play for? Because in theory, you could get to that, you know, obviously the clubs are talking about they want to get fans into the ground, but and if, by, and if, you know, by the middle of September, yeah. end of September, half yeah. the league might not have anything to play for. Yeah, and if there's no relegation, then teams can yeah. effectively just... I don't, I don't, I don't mean to take the foot off the gas, because it, it's probably unfair to say that, because they, they won't work there and, and purposely lose, but they, they'll know deep down that they're still safe for next year, if that makes sense. Um, so there could be a few dead rubbers, but we're, we're in the situation that we're in. Uh, we're, we're just going to have to, to make the best out of it. it. We're not saying it's going to be the, the perfect season and the be all and end all Super League, but we're just going to have to, to make do it. And, the the and other thing that's not been addressed so far is Challenge Cup. We don't really know what's happening with that. I think the RFL have said they are keen to have the final. At some point, I think so. Uh, where yeah. I can't remember what, what they were in the last sixteen, weren't they? There was, I think they got yeah. to the last sixteen. Yeah. Um, there was there obviously was I think four or five non Super League teams in it, which Toronto was still in the challenge. Um, yeah, um, you know, so there's still teams outside of Super League that are in the Challenge Cup now. Obviously, if Championship doesn't resume, then them teams, it's going to be very difficult to persuade them teams to come out and yeah. play, you know, basically one, you know, I, I can't remember what the draw was, um, I can't remember whether any of the non Super League teams have drawn each other, but um, it'd be very difficult for them to come out, I think Rochdale's still in it, I think, if, if Andy Macy's still on, I'm <laughs> sure Rochdale's still in it, um, it's going to be very difficult for them to come out, but then at the same time, can you just say, well actually we're just going to have the Super League teams uh-huh. wave through into and, and, and that that wouldn't be it's a serious competition. Yeah. yeah, it's not a serious competition. So, uh, I think they've got to be careful in how they, they manage the Challenge Cup this year because I don't want them to just have the Super League team and then just have a final just for safety selling my way out. Well, not so. No, no, I mean, the other thing is, is next season as well as the impact on next season. Um, I spoke with, I was at, I had a chat with Eric Perez from Ottawa and he said, it, interesting for them, if the season starts, the season gets delayed, that actually suits them because. Obviously, they can only start playing home games mm-hmm. sort of April time. So if the start of next season gets put back a little bit, that might actually suit someone like that. It'd be interesting to see because you, you know, if the grand finals like end of November, mm. that's what. Well, I mean, I suppose that's only like the being international, I guess. Yeah. I suppose that's it's the same thing, isn't it? I suppose if you, you know, generally the teams in the grand final would have England internationals anyway. So. And the, it's and only the same as last year's Great Britain tour. The last game was like start of December, wasn't it? Something. And the RFL have, re- have recently released, um, well, put a press release out and said that three million has been well. They would have expected to make three million on the Ashes yeah. series uh, between England and Australia, and obviously that's not going ahead. So effectively, it's, it's three million. Is it? Lots. Is it a good opportunity to, to scrap the loop fixtures for next year? Because obviously we're going to have to get the season done and dusted in time for the World Cup. But then you can just imagine the Super League clubs around the table thinking, oh, we don't want to lose yeah. another six home, uh, another three home games when we've lost everything this year. Yeah, I'm not, I, 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 I hate loop fixtures anyway. I can't stand loop fixtures. I won't, I won't have them anywhere. So I certainly won't have them next year. Because I, I think all of the focus has got to be on the World Cup next year. It's a big year next year. It's obviously the World Cup, the broadcast, the TV deals up, um, the Sport England funding as well gets decided next year as well. So it's quite a pivotal year. Um, we're sponsored by Betfred, of course, Super League and Championship, etc. Sponsored by Betfred. There's murmurings growing about betting sponsorship in the UK and whether that might be on its last leg. So, 
you know, it, it's very. I, I suppose you can you can appreciate the clubs are in this position where they're quite worried about their finances moving forward at the moment. It's a test. It's, it's going to be a testing time, but I think Betfred have been brilliant sponsors. Uh, for Super League Championship, League One, Women's Super League. Uh, I think they've been the best sponsors yet um, that Super League has had. It'll be a shame if, if that does come into play and and betting sponsor, sponsorship in, in sport is on the way out because um, they've done a lot of good things socially as well uh, and they interact a lot with the fans, which not many sponsors have done before. Uh, they, they, I know, I know we've got a little part, partnership with them as well, James, and I'm not just saying it because we've got a partnership with them, but they do uh, good work within the, the communities in it, Rugby League. I mean, in some ways, you know, in some ways, Rugby League was too slow to get on that gravy train, if you like. Obviously, they had, they rejected, they famously rejected the deal from Betfair um, for the Stobart thing mm. eight, nine years ago, and it's like maybe Rugby League hasn't maximised what it could have done out of the betting sort of industry before it, you know, we don't know how long it's going to be, I think there's a thing in Spain, they've banned it from La Liga and the football in Spain, so they don't affect sponsorship or advertising anymore, um, how long it'll take for that to come into force in the UK remains to be seen, um, but ultimately 2021 is going to be a massive, you know, massively financed pressure on Rugby League and might dictate what it looks like moving forward. Mm. Um, have we got anything else? Do you want to chat? Um, else on? No, I don't think. I don't think so. Don't think so. Um, we're back. Well, this obviously we've been. Uh, you keep it local belief for all the latest. Um, obviously, as the action gears up towards the new season. Um, keep reading the website. The restart please. The season. <laughs> yeah, Drew's been. Uh, keep reading the website. You're Drew's been like... working all the way through. So obviously, very. Let us know what you want to see as well. If there's any um, bits of content that you'd like us to do. Um, you know, we can certainly have a look. We're, we're obviously hoping the French rugby league season starts so we can go to France this, this winter and do a bit more over there as well. Um, it was nice and calf so long last week. It was. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, keep, we'll have to do a vlog this time. We'll do a vlog, a bit, yeah. a bit um, we, um, we will hopefully resume the last tackle podcasts as well. We'd only just started them. Had we done six or seven? Yeah, we did. And, and it was quite well received. Yeah. We've had Matthew um, Smith, Keith Mason, Andy Ian, Mason. Ian Smith, yeah. Ian Smith. We, um, we, we had quite a few good guests. We, we had some good guests lined up as well. We did, yeah. So hopefully uh, if we get once things have calmed down a little bit and we're allowed to bring strangers into the office from outside of our bubble um, we'll bring someone in for a chat but yeah please do like share etc with the video and um, we'll put it on youtube as well so we can put it on the site and you can subscribe to it on there and well we'll try and come back ne what day is it thursday yeah. next thursday we'll see you next thursday